Look out, footy's back. G'day, I'm Alan Didak. Wait, I'm not Alan Didak. I'm not a part of the Rat Pack at all. Not anymore. I am, in <laughs> fact, James Clements. This is the AFL Today Show. We make footy a little bit more fun. That's what we do, isn't it? This is the team's Thursday show, and joining me is local weirdo, full-blown footy enough. Someone, after a few tins, might call him an AFL expert. It's the stats guy. I'll take AFL expert any time of day. Uh, happy birthday to you as well, Jim. That's uh, very handy. Are Carlton going to get a, uh, a win, a birthday win for you? They better. <laughs> <laughs> or it's on for young and old. Uh, of course, this is the AFL team show. Thursday night, we're going to go through all the news that you need to know, then break down every single game this round. Luckily, only six. We've got big calls for the weekend. We're going to keep an eye on, get some super coach vibes. It's all going on. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out across all your socials. And let's go. Let's go. Because footy is back round 15. Can you believe that, Stats Boy? I know. We're getting to the pointy end already. We're almost in the back third. What this are we doing? Chaos. Anyway, let's start with the Thursday news, 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 news. Before round 15 starts, the biggest news, Sam Taylor. I don't want to say he busted a nut, but he ruptured a <laughs> testicle. <laughs> you said both anyway. Like I said before the show, I'd rather do an ACL than have a ruptured testicle. That is brutal. All right, let's try both. <laughs> Stand over there. <laughs> well, we one, one, one of us has to do one, one of them. I'll take the ACL. Uh, no, look, all jokes aside, <laughs> a ruptured is, testicle. Are you kidding? That, that is brutal. Oh, that's horrible. Sick. Like, mm, very bad. One of the best fullbacks in the comp. Yeah. An absolute crucial element to that GWS defense. Do you reckon Joel Amati could now go for have a bit of another Amati party and kick another nine? He, he could. It would Just definitely saying. help him. Yeah. Just saying. Uh, we might talk about that again later in some big calls. Yes. Uh, Simon Goodwin. This was a weird one. He's out there going, oh, look, our medical stuff is all good. It's tip top. You know, they're all doctors out there. Uh, it's like, why did you send Petrarca back out? And it's like, oh, the doctors, the doctors, the doctors. I'm not a doctor. It's not my decision. <laughs> the doctor. Come on, it's the doctor. And you're like, his family, like, he's, like, in hospital still. Like, he could have died. The other day. He could have died. He could have died. He's yeah. like, yo, man, he could have died. Mm. Who was going to cook our food? <laughs> yeah, his, wife, <laughs> his partner's like, well, they're all the TikTok fans were just not happy. They wouldn't have been cooking anymore. But it was just a weird situation <laughs> where it's like, oh, he's being forced to defend his actions. And it's like, I don't know how many actions Simon Goodwin had, but mm. here we are. He's had to defend it himself was, a few times. Like, it was still, like, it's good that this story is still actually floating around, I think, because I feel like we need... In the AFL, we do tend to forget, oh, someone got injured in a horrible, horrible, horrible way. And a week later, you just sort of like, you well, they're not it. playing anymore. We're yeah. like, we're done here, right? Yeah. So Petrarca was in hospital for like ages. Yeah, he was in the, at least a week. Yeah, yeah. Like a ruptured spleen, yeah. like all these horrible, horrible car crash injuries. And I feel like it's good that we sort of maybe look at the way, it's very similar to the Jeremy Cameron like concussion sort of thing where it's like, he should not have gone back out there. No. And that, like these sorts of things. We need to it's keep been, talking these out so we get them yeah. right. I feel for the, the medicos and the, and the doctors and stuff, I, I've seen it in local footy, that the player always wants to go back on. It's yeah. still, people go, oh, everyone knows about concussions. The player always wants to go back on. That's why you take it's it out of their hands. It's a tough situation. It should be, yeah, like an assistant coach or something that just takes over. I don't know. It is a hard situation though because the player could just walk back on. It's very weird. Nice one. Uh, other little bits of news. Zerha linked with the Pies stats guy. Yeah, I think North have offered him, uh, my beloved North, have offered him a five-year deal, which I think is way too much. He plays one good game every six or seven weeks. Also looks like he was in, uh, I don't know, Reno 911 or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. Like basically, what's the other the other police, the cops? Basically police cops. That's yeah, yeah it's like cops. police cops. <laughs> it's coming to a, to a TV new. Uh, what is it, Super Troopers? He looks oh, yeah. like any other character out of Super Troopers. He could uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, he's a good player, and I, I think uh, there's a lot of other teams are going after him because uh, he's sick of losing, which is honestly fair enough, but I don't think he's going to be worth it that much. Well, if North players are sick of losing, are they going to have a team next year? Honestly, well, that's what Aldi U said <laughs> as well. I, I know, right? Uh, no good. Port Adelaide are refusing to accept the Charlie Dixon ban. Guys, just let it go. <laughs> yeah. He belted a block. Like, what do you, want, what do you want to happen here? There's, it was late. They're yeah. setting up for a second appeal. Mm. Uh, watching the vision of Charlie Dixon in the... Uh, Santafel, Santafel, <laughs> you like as I like to call it. Yeah, uh, it's pretty tough. Mm. And like, I don't know what you guys like. I, it might just be Port riding high on the uh, Butters decision. Like, oh, we already won. We, one. Can, we can get everything over to <laughs> check this out. It's like we're going back in for a second appeal. We're going back in, boys. <laughs> It's like you've been kicked out of the nightclub. Yeah. It's like they're not the bouncers they're not going to let you back, back in. in. Yeah, like, yeah. What are you doing? Just go home. Especially call Charlie Dixon. He's an he's an angry man. It was off the ball. Just let it be. Uh, Dixon one. hasn't been in the team anyway, so it doesn't matter. Other little bits of news. The mark and the goal of the year in both the AFL and the AFLW. Now worth 50 grand. What? Love this. $50,000. 
Well, it used to be a car. As well as... Two million velocity frequent flyer points. Jeez. I think that gets you to Noosa. Geez, so Jamie Elliott gets you to Noosa. It's a free flight to Sydney. <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually know Can if that's a Can you get a lot toaster of... with two million points? <laughs> Is that not a lot? I, I think it's a lot. Oh, I was going to say, that sounds like a lot. Two, two million. But I love that. I'll, look, to be honest, <laughs> hey, if Virgin Australia want to give me two million velocity fl- frequent flyer points, that'd be great. Yeah. I think I'm still like, you know, bronze. Yeah. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I, I think know. if you book a flight with him, you're bronze. But oh, there you rocking go. out. Yeah, 50K. Well, it used to be a car, so that was around that. And then they went to cereal. Because uh, Nick Nat got uh, wheat bix, a year's supply of wheat bix, and I remember him saying he doesn't even like wheat bix. That's horrible. So I went from a car to wheat bix, and now we're back to fifty k. So all those guys in the middle are like, they "Come should, on, I just got cereal." They should be like filing a class <laughs> yeah. action lawsuit, going, "I got eight boxes of wheat bix. Yeah, they're getting fifty grand. What are we doing?" Also, anyway? well, Jamie Elliott and uh, Bobby Hill. If if one of them wins it, are they going to split the fifty k? Maybe, split. yeah. yeah. Uh, we also had a nice, fun look at some of the uh, team's biggest rivals, according to their fans. Yes. Uh, this is by the back pocket. Mm-hmm. They did a great job on this. I loved how North <laughs> hate Essendon. And I Essendon are like, Essendon. we don't even think about you at all. <laughs> they didn't even make their top five. That's well, amazing. The same thing happened with Gold Coast and Brisbane. Gold Coast, oh, we hate the Brisbane Lions so much. Brisbane like, who? <laughs> yeah. The Gold Coast, what? There's a team There's in Gold Coast? There's another team in Queensland. What? <laughs> anyway, love that. Uh, so, yeah, some big vibes there. Uh, unsurprisingly, yeah, all the Melbourne clubs just hate each other. The one that I like the most is probably that Hawthorne and Geelong. Just I like that, yeah. Still a lot of animosity. Still, yeah. And I'm like, that in my brain just traces back to like 1989 and stuff. Well, like, let's go. Then in the early 2000s, or of course. Mid, mid-2000s, you late got the thousands. late thousands is what, I, yeah, what you would say. They have 10 years of just going head to head. It was awesome. It's pretty good. Uh, other little bits, Sydney Swans. Yeah. The biggest club in the country Bob. with 70,000 fans. <laughs> Yeah, apparently. They're, Members. Yeah, they're, so they Remember their CEOs, oh, we're the biggest club in the world. They're about 30,000 th- short of that, I think, yeah. Yeah, so 70,000 <laughs> members for their 150th birthday. It's very cool. Good on them, especially considering mm. that this year's version of the Sydney Swans is the best team we've seen in 150 <laughs> years. So they're going to, like, wow. curb stomp everybody on the way to the flag anyway. <laughs> so they'll probably get another 30,000 members might. on the way because definitely Swans fans are not front runners at all. They're definitely not. And I would argue with anyone who says that they are, because they're not front runners at all, Sydney fans. They're definitely not stats guys. Stop no, grinning. No, I'm, I'm they're not. not. At all. I'm dead serious. They're yeah. definitely not. <laughs> and the last little bit of news. This is my. <laughs> this is <laughs> sad and funny all at the same time. It is hilarious. The Hall of Fame. <laughs> they killed Mike Porter. Oh. Stats guy. He was in the in memoriam. And like Peter Hudson's like. Mike's not dead. Imagine Mike, Mike's just got Fox footy on. He's going, oh, I watch my mates there in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm a legend of, the, legend of the AFL. I'll chuck it on. What? It says I've died. And he pinches himself. He's, He's like, like, I'm just, okay. Just That's checks like, his pulse. He's like, no, I'm good. That is a horrible error by the AFL. I'm still waiting for Laura Kane to come out and argue why the AFL were correct. <laughs> and why it should have been She's a like, well, technically, we were correct. And look, they got it right. She's on the phone to Boeing. Oh, my God. She's like, so what did you guys do to those whistleblowers? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can, yeah. You, can you hook me up? Get like, it, get it, get it. Get <laughs> I just need a phone number. <laughs> I need you to take this out my This is the best Porter. news segment we've ever had, I think. There's a lot going is, on. There's a lot happening. Okay, the good it. thing is, that is it for the moment, I think. Uh, <laughs> it's probably a good thing. I think what we'll do next Wednesday is we'll probably get, I think we've talked about rivalries and stuff like that plenty of times. More in depth, yeah. Uh, we might actually have a, have a look at some of the rivalries next week as well for the midweek Madness Show, which would be pretty fun. Sounds good. But that'll have to wait because round 15. Should we do it, Stats Boy? Let's get into it. All right. Friday night at the MCG, we'll see. Geez, oh, what would you rather be doing on a Thursday night? It's freezing, (laughs) bitterly cold in Melbourne. It'd be a real shame if you could just sit at home Uh, on your couch with a beer and watch the footy. No one wants to do that. Bloody No one would want it. Like, definitely no one would watch it. Carlton Geelong would have been the Thursday one as well. It would have been beautiful. <laughs> Seriously, what are we doing? Because like there is, yeah, there's nothing that people love more than doing is like staying at home watching footy on a really cold night. Great no, decision not making, not AFL. Anyway, uh, Friday night, Friday night, footy. <laughs> Friday, we see Carlton taking on Geelong at the MCG at 7.40. The Carlton Blues a second on the ladder. Yep, flying. And feeling pretty good. And it feels so good. It is a very strange situation where these two teams <clears> – <throat> Played about six weeks ago. Yes, that's when Danger got injured that those six weeks ago as well. Exactly. Mm. Uh, I took the squid to this game. It yep. was bitterly disappointing, but yeah. he did delete a hot dog. That's what he does. Oh, he, he, he would have loved it. Yeah. He's having a great time. <laughs> uh, it was also a little bit of a turning point in both these teams' 
um, sort of seasons, right? Mm. Since then, yeah. Since then. The Geelong Cats were what? They'd won seven on the trot, I believe, at that point. They had, yeah. They're now eight and five. So they've won one of the last six games. Yep. They are in sixth. Carlton are now nine and four. And look, we'd actually sort of signposted that six-week stretch for Carlton, and they absolutely smashed it out of the water, which was completely Yeah, I forgot a about that. You me. said, oh, if they can get through the six three, weeks. three, yep. We're laughing, and I think they went four uh, and two. Four. I think yeah, that's Sydney right. were in there, and there was the there was a game they lost before that as well. With such a close ladder, that's perfect. Exactly. Yeah. So Carlton have now won four of their last five, three on the trot. They mm-hmm. take on the Cats. This is a big litmus test, for obviously, for the Blues. Yep. The over-under is 171 and a half, uh, which is an interesting one because they've smashed this the last, last two, two times, times they've played. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are the 14th and 15th ranked defensive stats boy. Yes. Carlton do give up plenty of scores. We've seen Adelaide... Gold Coast, GWS put up pretty big scores against them. Uh, they did run at the top of Essendon last time we saw them two weeks ago, coming off the bye. Cats coming off the bye. How are we feeling about this? Oh, I don't know. Geelong have just had a horror of a few weeks. I think the line should be a little bit more favoured towards Carlton because you go, like we've talked about before, you go Sydney, all right, they're the premiership favourites. Then you go, who's next? Probably probably Carlton. And then you put a few more teams above Geelong, even though that where are they now? They're still sixth. But I'd still be putting some other teams below them, just above them. They've been horrible. Uh, Carlton's average winning margin this year is 20 points. That's why I don't mind that line of nine and a half. And then Geelong have lost their last five night matches at the MCG. So... In the big games against the big teams, since that uh, game against uh, the Carlton Blues, they haven't been very good. They did get smashed by the uh, Golko Suns, don't forget. Yes. And like the defense for the Cats is probably the more worrying aspect. They do oh, get horrible. danger back. Uh, they lose no Cam Guthrie still. Uh, they lose Tanner Bruin. Like, yeah, Bruin's a big out. He's been really good, yeah. And we'll be able to like break down the teams in a second once we actually get yeah, through some of, of all this. Yep. Uh, but let's answer the big question before we talk about all a couple right. of player vibes. Can the Blues actually just put a team that's decent to the sword? Like we saw them like just sort of manhandle Essendon, the best team in the AFL outside of the Sydney Swans. <laughs> but the craziest thing about that loss to the Cats was that they dominated them statistically yeah. in terms of clearances, in terms of inside 50s. Can they turn it into a win this time? Like that's the biggest thing for me. So That's the big question. I'm, I'm going to say, yeah, they've looked a lot better than the Cats. Like you got guys that Tom Stewart just looks so out of sort. You got Sam DeConing, who was really good in their premiership year. He's the lesser DeConing. This is a DeConing bowl too. Yes. I love a good DeConing bowl. Let's go. So yeah, uh, TDK's brother, Tom, has been a lot better. I'm very worried about this uh, Cats defense against Kerno, Mackay, and you got just Zach so many, Williams. Zach, well, I forgot about Zach Williams. He's turned into a monster forward. Well, this so. is it. Zach Williams is literally, literally since that Geelong game. Yeah. They've gone, well, Jack Martin keeps getting hurt. Let's throw Zach Williams in the Jack Martin role. And it's been awesome. He's just turned into a better version. <laughs> Cottrell's turned in, uh, not Cottrell, uh, Chincotta has Chincotta. basically turned into one of the premier taggers, but also ball winners out yeah, nowhere. Yeah. Uh, and, but the TDK thing as well, like he's been incredible as a solo ruck. Mm-hmm. So. Let's look at some player props here, stats boy. Yeah, why not? Uh, Danger's got 22 disposals, 22 plus disposals in nine of his last 10 of the MCG, so we're expecting him to be back in this side for the Cats. He averages 25 in his career there as well. He did do his hammy last time he came up against the Blues, so we're a little bit worried about that. But at the G, he just tears it up, and I think if Geelong are going to be close in this one, they've been really bad in the middle. He needs to have a big game. And then the other one, TDK, everyone loves him when he uh, plays at the G. Two plus goals in the Blues' last two Friday night games. I think I went to that other one. You were uh, at the one against Geelong. He just tore it up early. Got, I think he got the – did he get the first two against the Cats? Or was he might or have. two in the first quarter or yeah. something like that? He just loves playing against the Cats. The Cats have had uh, ruck issues all year as well. So, yeah, TDK to fire up. Well, I think that's one of the big sort of strange questions about this Cats team in general, isn't it? Yes. It's like we talked about them earlier in this season. It's like they have these moments where they look really slow, but then when they turn it on and they look like the Geelong of old, yeah. the one that won the flag like two years ago. Quick ball movement. And mm. without Danger, who isn't exactly the postest of dudes anymore. No. But I don't know. There's still just big question marks, and I think a lot of it starts with the uh, in the center of the ground. And you're like, look at this guy. Hey, do you want to – we've got a spare pitto. You want a pitto? Oh, that's not a bad you want a pitto? Yeah. And this is where I'm like, can we get the mid-year trade happen? Like, I know that they're not doing yeah. it this year. Because, again, cowards. <laughs> let's go. Come on. Give me some mid-year trades. Because if nothing else, like, Frio would have gone, here's a nice Sean Darcy. Yeah. Here's a Sean Darcy. You want a Sean Darcy? Who wants a Sean Ford. Darcy? <laughs> pitto, off we go. You're not uh, actually talking some, yeah, talking some sense. I'm always talking sense. <laughs> uh, anyway, the teams for this one. In comes Orazio. Fantasia. Out goes Jack Carroll. Oh, that sucks. Oh. Paddy Cripps' best mate. Yeah. Uh, in for the Cats come Zach Tui, Ollie Henry, and Paddy Dangerfield. Not bad, that trio. 
Not bad at all. Uh, Shannon Neal goes out. Reece Stanley's injured and Tanner Bruin's injured as well. He broke his wrist, didn't he? Um, I think in training. He did, yeah, that's brutal because he's been really good. He had been fantastic. So, tricky one. Stats guy, who are you picking? Uh, I'm going the Blues by 12. They just know how to make it close. I think they'll cover that line, but I, I think I originally had them like 20 or 30 plus, but you got some decent ins there. You got Ollie Henry, just that extra size. I think he'll kick a couple of goals. Zach Tui is really good at the G as well. So, yeah, I'm he going Blues. He loves playing against his old team. He loves playing against his old team. I'll go Blues by 12. Just, just eke out a win like they always do. They'll uh, make you nervous, uh, of course they will. as usual. <laughs> they can't make my birthday easy. It's no, like, no. They're never going to do it. <laughs> but they'll get a win for you, I reckon. They better. Carlton by 15, I've got. Nice. Saturday! Let's go out west to Adelaide. <laughs> it's west from here, at least. Yeah, I was going to say. Port yeah. Adelaide are one and a half point favourites against the Brisbane Lions at the Adelaide Oval. This is at 1.45pm on Saturday afternoon. The over-under is 168.5, which is a pretty interesting one because – you think about these two defenses. You're like Port have had some pretty obvious ups and downs this season. Uh, Brisbane were amazing last time we saw them out, right? Like what, I'm last week, sure. last week. Oh, they were on offense, but they conceded a hundred and something points to St Kilda, which is a exactly. worry. But they, they were they, they were gave a lot up better. the ghost. The the Q yeah. went in the rack. When they whatever. when their offense is firing, they sometimes don't even care about defense. They're exactly. just attacking, so it's all good. They're like, we've got a hipwood, we've got a Dan. Yeah, just yeah. check this out. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna fully armed and operational Joe Duckets. Yes. Uh how do you feel about that over under here, stats boy? Uh you got fourth versus eighth best defenses in the comp, but the last five uh Night match, sorry, I was going to say, Lions matches have gone over. So the Lions have been kicking scores. At the start of the season, they were a bit worried. Their offense wasn't really clicking. Yep. So I'd still be going the over. you got some decent forwards, even though you got some strong defenses. But I, yeah, I think Brisbane now, for the rest of the season, they're just going to play really attacking, and that's going to help it go over, I reckon. All right. Yeah. You got some stats there? Yeah, Brisbane have won six of the last seven matches against Port, but that only includes one win at the Adelaide Oval of those six. They've, they've played five of the last six at the Gabba. So I don't know why Port have been shafted with that fixture, but they hardly ever play at the Adelaide Oval, Brisbane. So that's the only one to consider, but they have a really good record against them. Yeah, Interesting. Mm. All right, the ins and outs for this one. Lots of ins for the Ooh. power. They've got the power to maybe win. <laughs> uh, Logan Evans makes his debut. Oh, Very nice. Yeah. Jordan Sweet, Jeremy Finlayson, and Willie Rioli back. That's a big one. Yeah. Big Sweet. Ivan Soldo goes out. That's a little bit stiff. He's been pretty good, I thought. Uh, Quentin Narkel out. Michael Narco. Dylan Williams out. Francis Evans out. Interesting. Shadow Brain. Oh, he's back. Name. I love yes, it. Yes, Shadow awesome. Brain. He's back in for the Lions. <laughs> Noah Answorth goes out injured too. What a name. 200th game for Harris Andrews. Very cool. Ooh. I do like the, the uh, what is he, the leading intercept marker in the comp. He is, yes. Very cool. Because their defense has been great. Uh, the big question, who are the bigger frauds? Yeah, I chucked that in there. Fraud Adelaide, uh, the Brisbane frauds, whatever you want to call them. Oh, it's a tough one. I think whoever wins this. I think the, I, you know sorry, I mean. loses this is the bigger fraud. You know me, I love the power. I think this is really <laughs> hard. Yeah, you know that. You love like Everyone every team that. apparently. <laughs> okay, I love Connor Rosie. <laughs> okay, <me>. okay. <laughs> I think if Port don't win this, like let's just pack her up, boys. We're done here. Like, yep. Even though they're still seventh on the ladder, eight and five, they've lost their last two. This is a huge opportunity to like either just steady their ship mm -hmm. Or just go, oh, it's over. Whereas for the Brisbane Lions, it's still kind of hard to judge them if they, like, because as you said, they never play an Adelaide Oval. No, like, we really, weirdly enough, they hardly ever play there. Yeah. And we've seen them get, you know, <coughs> turn the ship around, a couple of big wins. Uh, what was it? Hipwood going off for kicking six. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome game for him. And then turning yeah. around, just putting Didn't up a big score much, against yeah. the Saints. Yep. If they can go on the road and actually win this game, they're back. Lions are back. Yep. I, so I like the big question. Yep. The bigger frauds. You got some player up. Vibes there for us? Yeah, uh, we've got Ollie Wines has had 25 plus in his last six home games against the Lions. So he's been a little bit up and down this year, getting a bit older, but he loves playing against the Lions. Uh, Danaher, he averages over two goals and I think over about seven or eight marks as well. He loves playing against the power. So And he's been in great form. So I think he's going to maybe kick a kick a bag, probably four plus, I reckon, yeah. I just, Joey, Joey Duckets. It's a tricky one, this one. Mm. <laughs> like it is a hard – this is the hardest tip of the round, I think, as reflected in the uh, – uh, one minus the one, one and, and a half, half point line. <laughs> They're like, yeah. ah, what should we do for that? Just put one and a half. I kind of vibe Brisbane. Mm. I am still the worried same. about them playing at the Adelaide Oval. Yep. Like it is just like Port are usually better there. So Brisbane smashed them 123-75 in a final last year. Yep. Happy days. Port smashed them at the start of the season 
126 yes, 72. It's like it was all, that, yeah. they completely reversed the score line. 123 75, <laughs> 126 72. Flip it up and reverse it. Let's go full Missy Elliott. Like it's absolute chaos. So both at home, yeah. I don't know. It's a weird one. Port. I want to trust them, but I can't. I'm going Brisbane by 12. <laughs> oh, I thought you were about to change your mind there. I'm going Brisbane by 10. I feel like I can trust them slightly more. I think the depth in that team, you got Connor Rosie. Uh, obviously a little bit injury cloud. Oh, sorry, but a few, just a few injury clouds and things like that, not at their best. So yeah, I'm going to lean towards the Lions. Nice one. All right, there you go. Let's do it. The Battle of the Bridge. Battle of the Bridge. It's a Sydney derby. Which bridge is that though? No, oh geez, you better not ask anybody. <laughs> not because, the Sydney Harbour which, Bridge. Oh, did you know it's not the Sydney Harbour? <laughs> yes, we all know it's not the Sydney Harbour Bridge. To... Jeez. The Greater West of Sydney, Greater Western <laughs> Sydney Giants. I just took an N off the end of the yeah. uh, Western. Greater Wester. <laughs> Greater Wester, Sydney. <laughs> nice one. That's what they say out there. Yeah. How you going? Uh, and the Sydney Swans. How you going? No, we don't talk to you. <laughs> they're, they're out at NG. NG. 4.35 Sunday afternoon. Should be an absolute cracker out there at the showgrounds. Over under is 168.5. I reckon the Swans could do this by themselves no, if Sam did. Taylor doesn't have, uh, you know, he's blown a nut and off we go. <laughs> Battle of the Bridge, though. Sydney is 16 to 10 against GWS. Yeah, battle. That's the uh, just GWS the head -head. have stunk, though, for a big chunk of these ones, right? So, well, early on. Exactly. Yeah, so in the they last, it. I don't know, five years, they've definitely flipped it and been a better, the better side, probably. Yeah. All right. So give us some stats, stats, man. Yeah, Sydney, four and three record at uh, NG at the showgrounds. Uh, four of the last six meetings have been decided by less than three goals. Jeez. So there's been, it's been a really good uh, rivalry, as we we're talking about rivalries before. There's yep. been lots of close games. Uh, Sydney have covered the line in six of their last. Uh, sorry, their last six away games against GWS as well. So they play really well at the showgrounds. But uh, yeah, I think it's, I think this could still be decently close. I'm, I am worried though with Sam Taylor out. That is that is not good. Yeah. I'm more worried about it. I think we've hit on the simple fact. I think you look at this GWS uh, structure hmm. and like how much like having Kelly back last week helped. Uh, Buckley being uh, Buckley back as well. is, is at uh, fullback, which isn't a bad replacement. He's a good player, but he's a bit undersized, I think. Yeah. As for the actual teams, teams yes. in comes Lucky Ash, Max Grzyowski. Grzyowski. They call him Gru. Gru. <laughs> Where? The moon. What the moon is not safe. <laughs> <laughs> James Peatling as well. Out goes Sam Taylor. Nick Haynes was injured as well. Yes. Aaron Cadman. Dropped. He's dropped oh. off. Oh, we were loving him at the start of the season. Gru makes his debut. <laughs> Love that. Uh, and Caden Cleary comes in for the Swans in place of Matt Roberts. Debut, Cleary. So a couple of de debutants. Don't mind Roberts that. Roberts admitted that's a bit stiff. Big question. Is mm. GWS any good? Uh, no. No. They have been horrible the last month. They were great at the start, but they were playing some pretty bad teams. Fifth on the ladder, but yeah. they have it's lost weird. three of their last five. Like we said the other way, you can be in the top eight and not good at the moment, <laughs> which is a weird thing to say, but I just don't rate them. The toughest part is they're playing against the best team in the last 150 years of the <laughs> AFL. I forgot about that. Yeah. Well, was he rules footy? Sorry, not the AFL. The AFL has only existed since the early. Oh, I thought you were going to say in all sport. <laughs> it's the greatest sport team ever. Well, I mean, they're pushing it. <laughs> They're getting pretty close to being the best team in the history of sport. We're so. winning three flags in a row, I think. They That's are right. going to curb stomp everyone on the way to the flag. <laughs> Put all your money on them right now. I'm not a betting man. Uh, <laughs> I definitely am. Uh, no, the Swans are incredible. They're 12 and 1. This yep. is their best start since World War I. Jeez. 1918. How, well, was that a good year for you? It was for me personally. <laughs> I don't know. It's my birthday, <laughs> Stats Boy, but I'm not that old. I, like, know. I don't know how old you are. No, I'm <laughs> but World War One, the Great War, they called it. <laughs> Nothing great about war, though. No, it? no, that's so, a different podcast. 1918. That's the last best start they've had. That's incredible. The Sydney that Swans. That is crazy. Yeah. Uh, so 12 and 1, they are curb stomping every team they come across, but they are letting teams like jump them. And like that's mm. probably the only qualm remaining to the Swans start. fans. They're just like, yeah. can we just not have these quarters where we just don't score? Like, what is going like, on? Like last week against Adelaide, Adelaide looked like at one point they could have won that. And then obviously they <laughs> won by, was it, 42 points in the end? Yeah, they but keep spotting teams like six goal leads. It's going to blow you at purpose? some point, right? They're doing it on purpose just to give teams a chance. I don't know. Uh, either way, the big question RGD was any good. What, yeah, think, what do you think on that? I one? think they'll be fine. Okay. <clears throat> Sydney are unreal. Yeah. Like 
they are the best team in the last 50 years, 150 years. <laughs> Just keep adding years. Like, it's crazy. Just lots of years. <laughs> no, but the Sydney are legitimately incredible. Yep. GWS are not as good. So I'm going to tip Sydney by 38. But have you got some uh, oh, stats some, there? Stats yeah, player there. props. Uh, we've got uh, Chad Warner, two-plus goals. I believe his full name is Chad Chunley, Chunley Warner. Warner. Yes, Chunley Warner. Two-plus goals in four of his last five. That's that's the difference between though, like people saying, oh, he oh, could win at Brown, though. He's in that sort of category because he's kicking goals from the midfield. Uh, and then you've got Whitfield, 25-plus disposals in 17 of his last 19 games which has been really handy for my super... Lucky Whitfield, the footballer? The footballer, yeah. They missed the consistent there calling him a Jeez. jetter here. Uh, but yeah, as a tip, I'm going Sydney by 25. I th- I probably should bump that up a little bit more, but these GWS games seem to be close. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm on party. <laughs> oh. I'm on party. He's kicking nine again. Let's no, go. On the dot. Surely he kicks 10 if he's on nine. No, no long way sits him again. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. No, I guess one's by 38. I think the the Giants put up a big fight. This would be an awesome game. I can't wait for this. That's It'd not even really in the fun. big call segment as well. No. Nine. That's just, we'll get just, there again. Yeah. I'll just rehash it. <laughs> Saturday night. Ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba. Saturday night. I couldn't buy tickets to Cold Chisel this week. What the hell happened? Oh, I don't know. If anyone's got Cold Chisel tickets out there, hit your boy Jim up. Oh. Just oh, break my heart. Yeah. Sold out too quick. It's just oh. ridiculous. Anyway, I was there. I was in the queue. They're all gone. Oh. It Don't get me like started with Cuban. went that way, but it that way. You of HBO. Uh, anyway, Melbourne host North Melbourne. This is a fascinating setup. It really is. For some reason, the Demons are 32 and a half point favourites. Well, oh, there's some stats that help their, uh, their reason. I mean, <laughs> sure, but by the same token, the Melbourne Demons of Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, are they any good? Uh, they not, are lately. Scoring not lately. 77.3 points a game. That is good for 14th in the comp. I've got another little stat on that as well. So sure. it's the 14th versus the 16th. So 16th is North uh, in the comp for offense. But in the last month, North has been a lot better on offense. So you got 67.5 points per game in the last month for Demons. And then uh, the Ruse, 76.5. That obviously was helped on the weekend with the Ruse, but the Ruse have had a couple of decent games on offense. Whereas the D's just dropped off dramatically, and now they don't even have Petrarca. So they're, they're cooked on offense. They got belted by basically 100 points, as we explained, against yep. Freo. <laughs> yeah, basically. <clears throat> they lose the Collingwood game. They then have the bye. Yes. I am worried about this Demons team to a huge degree. But yep. at the same time, I'm not that worried because I don't think they're very good. So I'm not actually okay. worried. Okay. If I was a Demon supporter, I'd be very worried. Uh Give us some stats here, stats boy, before we get into some big questions. Yeah, sure. The uh, North haven't won at the MCG, my beloved North, since 2017. That was before you were born. No, <laughs> I'm not that. Old. No, yeah, maybe. No. And then uh, haven't been Melbourne since 2019, and that Jeez. win was uh, in Tassie. So we've had a few decent games against Melbourne in Tassie, but yeah, just a horrible record against them. Melbourne though have failed to cover the line in four of their last five matches, and they've had a. I think it's like two of the last four weeks they've only scored 51, 49 points. They've just Forgot how to score. So yeah, it's a tough one. This is a really tough one. I don't think the line should be that that much. And that we'll They've get lost into that four of their last five. They yep. lost to the Blues. They lost to the Eagles. They bounced back and beat the Saints. Then they got smashed by Frio mm-hmm. in Alice and then lost the uh, King's birthday game against Collingwood. Where they scored 51 points, as you said. 51 this is, is horrible, yeah. just – It's, it's actually a tough game. They stink. The ins and outs don't really seem to help them too much. Adam Tomlinson comes in for the Ds. Colton Tholstrup. He's a big in. Love that. Great name. Kynan Brown. Oh, he's on my super coach bench Love since the, since. The, Obviously, out goes better. Christian Petrarca. Yes. Jack Billings has been dropped. Ooh. And Bailey Laurie has been dropped as well. Right. In for your ruse, Dylan Stevens, the quadrillion billion dollar man. Oh, yeah. He's been crap this year, but wow. that's okay. Jai Simpkin. Out goes Sleevo. Yeah. Stevenson. Well, Sleevo hasn't been wearing his sleeves and he keeps getting dropped. So there's, there's a correlation there, I think. Yeah, they're very it has clearly to be. is. Can bring back the sleeve sleeve. <laughs> and out goes Callan Dawson as well. He oh, was uh, suspend- suspended. Yeah, he was good actually, but suspended. Bumped a guy in the head. <laughs> so the big question is no truck, no Ds. They were <sighs> bad with him. Yeah, imagine they're without him. <laughs> without him. Like, what are we doing? Like, Jack Viney becomes like one of my favorite bets, I think, going forward mm. from here for 25 plus disposals each game. He had a massive run, uh, like late last year, where it was just like nonstop twenties or twenty fives. He doesn't look like himself. Apparently, he he's looked, working through injuries and, and things it seem, like that. Seemingly, has not been but at his could. best at all. He has to but look. I feel like maybe he just suddenly got, you know, a little bit more responsibility on those big broad to, shoulders yeah. and that huge big jaw of his. So yes, we'll see what happens. Uh, no truck, no D's. I think. Yeah, I don't think. Oh, there I is. think that's true because there was already no D's. There. What are they? Eleventh. Exactly. Yeah. Did you have any other player props? Anything? Yeah, a few, a few more. Uh, Fritch has kicked four plus goals in the last four matches against the Roos. He 
loves tailing us up. Junk time Fritch, I call him. I think three of those each game would be in the goal square in the last minute when they're already up by 50 points. I'm not going to get into that. I can't stand barely Fritch. Uh, Zach Fisher as well. Your old uh, Carlton boys had 30 plus disposals in five of his last six games. Was a bit off last game and I was yelling at him uh, at, at the uh, at Marvel Stadium, but he's been really good for the Roos. You Roos. personally, like, hey, Zach Fisher. Yeah, yeah, me personally, with all the other North supporters, yes. Hey, Zach Fisher, get a haircut. Yeah. No, no, I, I don't mind his haircut. I just meant just get a kick, kick it to a If the Roos win mate. this game, you need to get a Zach Fisher haircut. <laughs> what? I don't even know who his haircut Does he have shaved no, on the sides? he's got a pretty normal haircut. Yeah, I was going to say. So it's all right. Oh, yeah, that's all right. I'm bad. happy with that. It's pretty similar. Grow it out. Yeah. Uh, the tip. Here we go. This just, is this just is the big. tip. <laughs> I'm not answering. North that. by three. We're both tipping North. Is this the first time North basically <laughs> beat Collingwood last week? We didn't though. Sadly. Melbourne have been horrible for six weeks. Yep. We've well, been. What are we doing? We've been good for two weeks. I'm tipping North by one. If this North, shows how much, this shows how confident we are though. <laughs> one it, and three. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. To be honest, if this is a Marvel, I'd be all over North. That it's yeah, a same. G. I'd be. A little, I'm a lot more worried. I just really do not like Melbourne right now. Yep, I Simple can't believe stuff. we're both tipping north. <laughs> hey, Sunday, it's the sheety wave bowl scarf vibe. I love this game. <laughs> Essendon West Coast, the bomb rays, a 33 and a half point favorites over the West Coast Eagles. Stats boy, why is that? Because it's a marvel. Yeah, exactly right. 1 p.m. on Sunday. The over under is 167.5. West Coast, look, obviously you're right at home. Yeah, they've been good. Other than against the Roos, they beat the Ds. What's their away stats? That's good. Oh, they don't want to hear this. Uh, they've lost 24 of their last 25 away games. Very hey, similar to North. That's pretty bad. <laughs> that is that is pretty bad. Because, yeah, at home, they've got the big crowd. They're, they're all fired up. They run out through that. As Alex said, there was no banner sometimes for the West Coast games. They have that inflatable thing. Maybe they should have bring that inflatable banner to Marvel, and then they could win this. I'm sure they could just leave one here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. It's just a little inflatable thing. <laughs> I'll keep it in my house. Adam <laughs> the kids Simpson, will love it. It's yeah, like, great, I'll just pop it up every so often. <laughs> Squidge is running through. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. I'm Ellie. Yo. <laughs> uh, the ins and outs for this one. Mason Redmond, big one. Xavier Ooh. Dersma, big one. Sam Draper, big one. Nate Caddy, not as big, but still pretty handy. Uh, out goes Elijah. Ta-ta. Yes. Uh, Jake Gresham plays his 150th game. Oh. All very memorable. Let's rank them. All right, let's go. No. <laughs> One. Uh, the Eagles. Dom Sheen goes out injured. We mentioned that on yesterday's yeah, show brutal. with uh, Eliza Riley. Yep. Jaden Hunt oh, comes like in. Hunt. Oh, here Tyler we go. Tyler Brockman comes in. Wait for it. Josh Rothman comes in. And finally, the return <laughs> of our beloved Oscar <laughs> Allen yes. 2 Plus. Where's the this, T-shirts, Jim? <laughs> get the T-shirts, that's boy. Oscar Allen is back, the big bustling forward. But is there room in that Eagles forward line for him? Are you joking? Next to the J-Train. They, they, that means they have two big guys down Are there, there enough goals to go around? <laughs> Definitely. When you've got J-Train kicking 20, what's Oscar <laughs> Allen going to kick stats forward? <laughs> when you got, wait, what are you wait, talking about? Where's the voice come from? I like he's, got a, he's got to kick 20 as well. Yeah. Talking about Oscar Allen, I'm, I'm going early on a stat here. He's got two plus in 18 of his last 24 games. Yeah, it's because he's, he's Oscar Allen, full name. He's Oscar Allen, two plus goals. Yes. I love Oscar So we love that. Uh, have you got some other stats for us? Uh, yeah, last meeting was a six-point win to the Bombers. That was when the Eagles were up a lot of the game and everyone's like, oh, can they get a win? And uh, But the Bombers have won four of the last five meetings. And as we said, West Coast are really bad at home. Zach Merritt also, also loves playing against uh, West Coast. He's had 28-plus disposals in his last six matches. But when him. you say they've won four of the last five, was that right? Yeah, yes. four of the last five. There's been a few close They've ones. all been very close. Yes, 71-77 yes. earlier this year. Again, this is very silly. It's not so much of a big call, but... We've got Carlton Geelong playing for the second time already. We've got West Coast and Essendon playing for the second time already this season. It's weird, yeah. Carlton haven't played like the Dogs mm. or Hawthorne. Our like, fixture. That's another to, podcast. You should, like, what are we doing here? Like, we should <laughs> play every team before you play a team a second time around. 100%. It's just ridiculous. Well, I still would back just everyone playing each other once. Fine. Because then it's fair. But you're taking money yeah. and food out of footballers' mouths. That's <laughs> oh, good. They've got you're enough. a horrible. Person. They've got enough. They get free pizza. After that's the enough game. of your communist stuff. Here. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Karl Marx over here. Uh, anyway, 77, 71. The Bombers just fell over the line they against did. the Eagles out west. Mm -hmm. They beat them 73, 72 at the end of last year. 96, 46 smashed them. Lost to the Eagles 107-97 at the end of 22 and uh, beat them again 87-71. So three of those games, four of those games have been pretty close. Four of, yeah, what's that? Four games under 16 points. So okay. pretty interesting. How interesting? Don't know. I'm still probably going to tip Essendon. But outside of this, the big question here for me, Stats Boy. What is it? What do you reckon Kevin Sheedy's doing right now? <laughs> right, right, right. Right now. at this moment. Uh, He's definitely eating like some sort of roasted <laughs> meat with three vegetables. 
Somewhere. Which vegetables? Brussels sprouts? Uh, potatoes, <laughs> beans, and carrots. 100% of the <laughs> well, You reckon he's just boring? <laughs> Is he waving his scarf? He always he's probably his waving his scarf. scarf right now. <laughs> his GWS scarf, but that's his, uh, that's his real love. But really, it's like, can the Eagles win away from home? No. No. Definitely not. They so they stink it up because they they've got a few out. They still don't have uh who who is it? They still don't have Cully. He's a, he's a massive out. So yep. and Harley Reid, of course. Whoa, <laughs> Harley Reid, baby lamb. We haven't even um, talked about him. So they're huge outs. Their midfield's gonna McGovern, yo. You still got Liam Duggan. He yeah. overcame like an injury query. Yep. Uh, Oscar Allen comes back. The J train. Can they carve into this Essendon defense a little bit now with Possibly. Ridley back? Redmond coming back into the side, straight into the side as well, which is very cool. Uh, this is a, obviously the extended interchange. Do you think that Sam Draper plays? They've Ooh, got the likes of Caddy, Jai Menzi, Nick Hind uh, on that bench. Setterfield, I know, was overcoming a knee mm. uh, sort of injury from the test. Carlton game. So I don't know. Like, if this was anywhere else. Could tip the Eagles? You'd probably tip the Eagles. You'd think about it. Anywhere else. I'm going. <laughs> okay. If this is I'm joking. Estimate, I'm joking. Yeah. I'm going to go Essendon by 18 because I think it would okay. just be a little bit of a stress, but they'll get there in the end at. The uh, old Marvel on Sunday afternoon. So that's boy. Uh, I keep changing mine. I'm going to go Essendon by 28. I think they'll be pretty comfortable, but I think Oscar Allen in makes a big difference to that forward line. They don't just have to rely on the J train. So yeah, it'll be pretty close, but Essendon by 28. All right. Have you got another uh, one other player prop in there? Didn't you? Uh, no, I already talked about Zeret. Yeah, I talked about Zeret. Oscar yeah. Allen. Zeret, Oscar Allen. I think are the main two. J train for three All right. goals. What do you reckon over under for uh, Ridley's Super Coach score? Ooh. 115 over under. Uh, who's he have to come up against? I'm going to. J Train, Oscar Allen. Over under, maybe he's like 105. Is I'd go you, over. Oh, you go over, yeah. I, I'd be going. I'm going under. I think there's some really good forwards down there. So going under. Sure. <laughs> All right. Final game of the round. Frio hosts the Gold Coast Suns. 15 and a half point favorites. So we actually both of us picked Essendon not to cover the 33 and a half against oh, yeah. West Coast. Interesting. Forgot about that. Just sort of does, you know, there's that little bit of doubt. West Coast can, you know. They got some decent ins, yeah. They also might just get smashed by 70. They could. Uh, yeah. Frio, 15 and a half point favorites against the Suns out there at Optus Stadium out west, 4 p.m. Sunday afternoon. 156 and a half is this over under. Mostly seemingly because of Frio's, apart from when they deleted Melbourne, uh, much more sort of defensive yeah. minded sort of game. Well, I they're guess. The, the second most. They're, sorry, they're the second best defense in the league. Uh, Eliza on our show the other day, if you want to check that out, said they were the number one defense. They're still the league's second best defense after conceding 149 last week. So that shows how far ahead they were. Chaos. So, yeah, Frio, I think Sean Darcy even chatted to Eliza Riley about that, said they just need to concentrate on defense and they think they can win all the other parts of the ground. So if they yeah, concentrate on defense here, I think they can get a win. They're also playing Gold Coast yes, there at go. home. Big question. In Optus <laughs> Stadium in Perth. So the big question is, what makes Gold Coast afraid of playing below the twenty eighth parallel? I got, I got no clue. They, Why are they afraid? <laughs> they what a, makes them so afraid of cutting across the twenty eighth? Maybe they need to go to a hypnotist or something just to just to say well, we can I'm play sure away. Dimmer we can, can play away. Up. Let's go, Dimmer. Dimmer, Come on. Dimmer probably is out. a hypnotist. Uh, the last <laughs> couple of games between these two, Frio got by them one hundred to ninety. That was in the Gold Coast. Uh, sorry, in Gold Coast last year. Yep. Uh, amazingly. The Suns beat them at home again, 69-33. So they haven't played out west since 2021, stats man. Yeah, that's they're just very, very inexperienced. Pretty they? ridiculous. Mm. Um, this is just – it's such a stupid thing that Gold Coast can't win away. It is. They're a, they're a good team, sort of. I don't know. I hate it. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, annoying. I hate it, but I love it. They've lost 12 straight, as you said. 12 right? straight 12 away, straight. yep. Haven't been haven't Frio been in Frio. Perth since 2016. That was at Domain Stadium. Wasn't even. I don't even know if they've won. They actually, sorry, they've been West Coast there a few times, but never beaten uh, Frio at Optus Stadium. That is incredible. Yeah, I'm still probably going to lean Frio, but okay. I mean, just this. The biggest question literally just revolves around simply Gold Coast away, and like, what can they make? It's just that? such a different team. Yeah. The tricky part is all the ins and outs. Heath yes. Chapman in for Frio. Hugh Davies, Tom Emmett, Neil Erasmus, Corey Wagner. Hello. <laughs> Uh, Josh Draper goes out, as does Michael Walters, who was injured as well. Tough one. The Suns have a litany of ins. Uh, Will Powell. That's a tough one for our man, Alex Sexton. Uh, oh, we'll see on. how that goes. Nah, oh, He's yeah. Super coach wise. Super, yes. super coach. Yes. Just saying. Uh, Sexton is named on the bench too. Bray, mm. Will Powell comes in. Jake Rogers is back in. Sam Day. This is obviously the extended bench. Jared Witz. There's some big ins. Witzy. Brandon Ellis. Lloyd Johnson. Can do a flip. Doesn't mind a flip. Yeah. Good call. Alex Davies and Huego. 
Wow. I think, yeah. Way or something Wea? like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wea. 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 <laughs> Great name. I love that. Braden, Fri- Braden Fiorini goes out. Ben King. Oh, he is injured. After all, I just wrote some stats about him. You had the inside word. I did have the inside <laughs> word on that one, stats man. Nick Holman goes out as well. He was dropped. My beloved Jed Walter's been dropped. Oh, he's dropped. What <laughs> the hell? Get a ring, Dimmer. How's he going to win the Brownlow now? <laughs> Dimmer, you break him heart. <laughs> Ned Moyle's been dropped as well. I know Jim won't be watching this game now. Now that Ned, Ned Moyle's not, not playing. Uh, now that Ned Moyle's not playing. <laughs> <laughs> Ned Moyle. <laughs> Jed, Jed Walter not playing is just, that's an affront to God. It's like, how can you have the Adonis not play football? This is ridiculous. That is, that's, that's horrible. <laughs> Freo by 24. Freo by 24? Yeah, okay. They've, oh, they've been really bad, so that's why I was hesitant to pick Freo. I'm only picking Freo because Gold Coast don't win away. Yep. I, I don't like Freo the last couple of weeks. Obviously, they uh, – no, sorry, last week. They just fell, up, fell apart against the Dogs. 149 points conceding. That is just horrible, but I'm going to tip them by 13 just because Gold Coast are really bad away. Yep. You got some stats there for the player props? I did have a Ben King stat, but that's gone out the window because I thought, oh, he could still win the Coleman, but if he's out for one or two weeks, that's going to cost him. Sarong, though, he's had 25 plus disposals in his last 19 games. He's probably the most consistent ball magnet in the competition right now. I think, so if you want to look at uh, some goal kicker stuff, Ben Long without Ben King yes, in there is he's obviously been really a big good. one. Uh, Lukosius, if he's not playing in the Northern Territory Gold Coast, I'm probably going to steer clear. Bailey, Bailey Humphrey, Humphrey loves doesn't goal. mind getting around a snag. Him two plus yep. and like 15 touches is probably where I'd be leaning to. Definitely. Let's do it. Big calls for round 15. It was obviously North beat the Demons. Oh, we're both saying that one, yeah. And the Demons missed the finals because of this. Yep. How about another Amadi party? I don't mind it. How, nine plus? Maybe. <laughs> let's look. I said nine plus earlier in the show. Let's just say Joel Amadi six plus goals. Okay. I'm feeling yeah. this. Let's go nine. It's GWS cool. is playing, you know, out west in Sydney. No Sam let's Taylor. Let's see how it goes. No Sam Taylor. Yep. Let's see another Amadi party. Don't mind that. Stats guy. Wow. Your favorite uh, call, I think for the last two years, even back with the Cobet days, Harry McFive. I don't think I've ever said those words, and it feels a bit wrong to say that because it never really gets up, but he's going to do it. Harry McFive, he's had six games this year already with three-plus goals, really shaky Geelong defense, who I think are 15th ranked in the league. Sam DeConing's off, Tom Stewart's off. Harry McFive is going to shine at the G on Friday night. The moment you said Harry McFive, I was so tempted to Will Smith slap you like yeah. you were Chris Rock. It's, it's your, like, your thing. Get my man's name out <laughs> your mouth! Bang! <laughs> But kick be, five, Harry, and we're all good. Yeah, kick five. <laughs> Jim, will, Jim will have some, uh, some uh, bit of money on it, I reckon. I will. <laughs> uh, keep an eye on. What are we looking forward to this weekend? What are we looking at? So a lot of this were, for me was like literally the Blues proving that if they can actually, you know, stomp a good team. Mm-hmm. And then not not just fall over the line as well. Not just fall over the line. Yep. Like they did a really good job of that against Essen and they get the week off. Yes. Happy days, right? But the way that Geelong – controlled that game that last time they played was really, really worrying at the time. Carlton have sort of fixed a couple of the things about them since then. I need them to come out and just win that game yep. pretty handily. That'd be really nice. Because it's sort of like this becomes like one of those lines where you go, okay, are you a legit contender who can stay in the top four? Yep. Are you? Don't know. Question mark, yeah. right? You beat a team like Geelong right now at this point of the season, you have a really good chance of being a top four team. So yep. uh, no, the call. Cats, same sort of flip side, right? Like if they can turn this around, like they I think are still alive. They need they a bit of be... confidence, not just their fans. The, the players just need to go, we can win, but yep. they just haven't had that last couple months. Uh, keep an eye on Joel Amati with no Sam Taylor and GWS. Four. Six plus. Amati party. Uh, if the Ds can actually prove they won't dramatically drop down the ladder. I just chucked this in there because I, I, I wrote dramatically drop down the ladder. They already have because they're 11th. Yep. But like if they lose this uh, – this week, trying to have a quick look at the ladder. Because they'd be I, seven and seven. They'd be seven and seven. I'd be backing Hawks, Brisbane, possibly maybe not Saints, but they could go down to thirteenth, fourteenth, which would be a horror drop off from a finals team that has just been around for the yeah, last Petrarca. five years. Oof. No good. And really, Port, can you not be fraud Adelaide? Yep. Simple as that. The Port Adelaide fraud, fraud frauds. I love this. It's, it's <laughs> just, I just want to see if you're any good. Can you just give us a week where you just they got like, their players back? Yeah. All right. A little bit of super coach before we get out of here. Uh, the VC and the C. Oh, so what are you going to do for your uh, captaincy this week, Stats Boy? Oh, because I'm looking at yeah. Sam Walsh on the Friday night still mm-hmm. uh, against the Cats where he dropped 150 against them, I think, two years ago Yep. at the G. And I feel like he's a really good chance to go big again. Uh, the other one is Sarong then, last thing on, su- uh, on Sunday. So – 
because I think he's got like 110 as his projected score. I'm also sort of thinking about Heaney. Heaney, yeah, yeah, yeah. Against the Suns. I don't mind Sheasel as a bit of a rogue one, just being a North fan. At the G, I think just the wide spaces, and he's get, he loves the uh, – he'll be out in the wing, out in the halfback. He'll get, he's been getting a lot of clearances lately in the middle. So I don't mind Sheasel because he's, he's been getting – he got 120 last week. I think he's got 120 plus the last three weeks. Being a bit more consistent than, than even Sarong the last three weeks. So, And then Sarong, I, I'm a little bit worried about Sarong. He got really good tackling midfield yep. with the Suns, but – he, I don't think they're time, not going to tag him though. So same time, like we have seen the Suns just play a little bit of uh, attacking, yeah. hesitant football at times true, as well. True. Not exactly a lot of the biff going on. Not wrong. Uh, Frio as well. Like in terms of the super coach, you got to keep an eye on Carl Warner. So Heath he Chapman comes back picks. in. He's on the extended interchange. Okay, Ooh. so it might get a little bit squirrely there. So yes. just keep an eye on him. Uh, Hayden Young is actually on the extended interchange bench as well, which I do not like. Oh, that'd be he'll be fine. He should be. Uh, Kynan Brown is probably your other fun rookie. One hundred two thousand four hundred dollars. <laughs> Love that for Kynan Brown. Let's go. That helps me so much bees. to get uh, I think nineteen or eighteen players this week because uh, I've had him accidentally on my team. So he's definitely going to pop onto my uh, onto my team as well so, as, like, <laughs> as part of my trades that I eventually get around. Uh, so the VC, I think I'll end up going Walsh probably into Sarong. I just feel vaguely okay about that. Gone against the Gone at the MCG is obviously a massive one, right? Yeah. So. It could be the one where I sort of just flip that Saturday Arvo and just go, right, we're riding Gordon. Riding Saturday Gordon. I don't mind Grundy as well. He's been really good. But away from the SCG, he doesn't get as, as big a scores. Yeah. True that. All right, there you go. That is the Thursday team show for AFL Today for today. We'll be back with the AFL Today show, not tomorrow, not the following day, but on Sunday. That'll be pretty fun because we're going to wrap up all of round 15 then. But there you are. You're all set up. Thank you, the Stats Boy, for jumping on. Thank you. And remember to smash a like across all of the socials for the AFL Today Show to see us doing lots of fun stuff. Uh, YouTube, Facey, IG, TikTok, X. We are the Sports Today Show on Facey as well. Uh, you can get around all of our other shows as well, the Cricket Today podcast, Football Today podcast, NBA Australia. Just did a massive NBA Finals winners and losers show. Lots of swears in that one, just a heads up. Uh, <laughs> hold all tickets as well with the GGs and NFL Australia as well. Subscribe, star, like all of those shows across all your podcast apps as well. Get around them. Like the AFL, getting around, putting a bloke who's not dead in the in memoriams. Yeah, what the hell was that? Nothing better. <laughs> nothing better. All right, that's it. We'll catch you on Sunday night for more AFL today to wrap up round 15. Until then, look after yourselves and remember, footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network. AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.